Dead in Hip Hop Most Anticipated Album Review. Kendrick Lamar, Mr. Morale, and The Big Steppers. Unfortunately, B is not here as you can see. Um, you know, obviously he would love to be here, but personal reasons cannot. I do not think that I need to give you a background on Kendrick Lamar. If I do, then you are super brand new to hip hop. Damn. And go ahead and discover our channel and go watch every single thing that we have done for the last 10 plus years. But yeah, five years since Kendrick Lamar's last album before this project came out, uh, The Heart Part 5 came out, and um, we all had our reactions to that. So make sure you go again on the channel and go watch that, you know, FIFO, uh, FIFO. And we also did our initial reactions to the album, one time listen. Um, obviously, we're here with multiple listens uh, to our belt. I have not changed too much of how I felt from the original reaction, the one listen. I don't know if you can ever say you, you really know what to expect out of a Kendrick Lamar album mm -hmm. because every single one has been so different. Sonically, stylistically, content-wise, the heart of the album is... It's Kendrick focused, right? And he gives you his perspectives on a lot of different things that's happening in life. <laughs> and on this one, he took a very direct approach with a lot of the themes on here. Father Time, that's the one that um, really hit me because I guess I can admit that I have daddy issues as well. And a lot of the things, a lot of the lyrics that Kendrick had on there, the same things I heard growing up. Be tough, wipe that off. and you know, all of those type of things. And it, I think Kendrick's dad was in his life, even though, you know, he said a lot of these things that's um, in the lyrics, uh, my dad wasn't. So, you know, I had that and then I didn't have that. And then you, that's kind of what I lived by, you know, and, and <clears throat> to grow older to see that, you know, a lot of those things are toxic traits. I thought that part was interesting because like, um, I, I didn't get that in like Good Kid, Mad City. I thought mm -hmm. maybe they had like a, better relationship mm -hmm. you know, or he didn't feel that type of way or whatnot mm -hmm. so yeah that was interesting to hear yeah. this different perspective on this particular album and i think that's the beautiful thing about kendrick as an artist right like where you may think one thing because of how he painted that picture mm -hmm. but then he comes back around and he goes deeper mm -hmm. for just that personal relationship you know and now you you kind of get a different glimpse um and a different idea of how kendra grew up you mm -hmm. know so that was one that definitely hit me we cry together <laughs> man i think i think any person that has been in a relationship can relate to that mm -mm. Nah. No, nah, I can't. <laughs> you can't relate to that? Nah, I I've never I've never called any woman I've been with a bitch. Me neither. <gasps> Me oh, neither. That's a lie. Oh I really? I did it one time. What happened? We're not together no more. <laughs> 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 I felt terrible about it. Yeah. It was one of those things where I don't want to say it slipped, mm -hmm. but it kind of slipped. Y'all know I don't yeah. really call mm -hmm. I don't call nah, women bitches. You, you don't right, right. say but that. But this word. was probably fifteen years ago. It yeah. just and I definitely wouldn't say yeah. fuck you, bitch. No, I would not. I never said, yeah. <laughs> but what I will agree with you mm -hmm. that I do know people in toxic relationships. Me too. I could relate to it in that way because I know people like that. Yeah. You know that have done it around you. Yeah, that just kind of awkward as fuck. Oh, it's so bro. awkward, bro. It's like, whose side so... do you take? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all took it direct. Like, I'm just talking about being in a toxic relationship. Yeah, I've yelling been... like that. Yeah, and then just, you know, going back and forth, and all of a sudden, y'all go to fucking again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> cannot relate. Yeah, man, that, that's that's definitely one of my favorite tracks, though. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I turn it down when I'm, depending on where I'm riding. <laughs> I just, it just feels awkward as hell to yeah, be really? bumping something that's in. Fuck you, bitch. Nah, fuck you, nigga. Fuck you. Yeah. If I'm in the grocery store parking lot, I don't want to be playing that loud. Yeah. I, I just don't. I have to turn it It's down. not pull-up music. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not. You know, it's, not. It's, it's just not. The other thing I wanted to point out with that that I didn't bring up on the uh, the uh, first impressions thing mm -hmm. we did was the chick in there was uh, um, in Zola, Taylor Page. I don't mm -hmm. know if you ever seen that movie. But yeah, she's always been um, like super dope. I loved her in that movie. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was interesting that he used her 
someone that's not a singer rapper or whatever to to do that verse that was cool that was interesting like that damn yeah just take an actor like you yeah. know what I'm saying how she broke up when she broke mm -hmm. up her word her brothers broke when she said certain things mm -hmm. not any rapper or singer can just do that mm -hmm. so for him to think like yo i should get this this actress or actor to do this I thought that was I, I I thought that was that was a very very smart move on his part. She was one of the standout features. Oh, one hundred. Yeah, it so. could have fooled me that she wasn't a rapper. She yeah. had to have done mm -hmm. some rapping some, somewhere. Nah, man, it's a Somehow, debut. Bro. I mean, That's she may have. Crazy. I mean, actors do a lot of things yeah. like singing and stuff like that. Just you know, doing plays and stuff. But but nah, man, yeah, she killed it. It's near the end, the uh, latter part of a verse. Mm -hmm. When she was talking about you're the reason that they do this, you're the reason mm -hmm. that they do that. The way she did that whole verse, yeah. oh man, and the cadence and stuff that she used, yeah. that shit was so fucking dope. It's one of my favorite parts of the song. Every time she starts saying that yeah. shit about high, uh, Harvey Weinstein, mm -hmm. you know, at the face's conclusion or something, she just killed Somebody that. Something about R. Kelly. R. Kelly. You don't know that he's they know abusive. he's an abuser and shit yeah. like that. I I, I love. Her more than Kendrick on that song. I like them both equally, I think, because they both had standout parts of the song. Like the day to day, you gonna walk to that bitch. Or like, like I don't know. <laughs> I just love the way he said that shit, and I love the part where he said, uh, "Just face it, all women just don't get along." And he was just like, "Why R and B bitches don't fe feature on each other's songs?" I was like, "Oh shit, they really don't." I, I was thinking, I was just like, that, "That's a good point." I, I mean, she's like, "What mm. the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> Which was the thing that popped in my head. It's like, what is he talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about all the popular R&B artists. They, they really don't be featuring on each other's songs like that. Mm -hmm. I said, I could do to never listen to that song again. Word. Squeeze That's me. That's the only song I skipped now. Are you serious? And it's not even that I don't like it. It's just, it's uncomfortable to listen to. The beat is great. Yeah. Um, shout out to Alchemist, of yeah, course. Yeah, bro. But it's just, that song is so uncomfortable that I just skip it. Damn. Every every time now. I'll get through about 15, 20 seconds of it. It's like, all right, I can't do this. What What is it about it? Like It's just, just all the fuck you, bitch. No, <laughs> fuck you, nigga. No, fuck you. No, oh. fuck you. No, fuck you. It's like, all right. Did y'all realize that like that was kind of like a poet of justice type of thing? You know, you know how uh, Tupac and Janet was going back? Mm -hmm. like, fuck you. No, fuck you. Fuck you. Like, I, I know that's where he pulled that from. I don't know if anybody caught that. I, nah, I, he I had didn't. a song called Poetic Justice, and his mm -hmm. album was to pimp a <laughs> Tupac, man. That third, hey. that Dr. Strange third eye. Open, hey, boy. It's open, boy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I love Poetic Justice, so I remember that scene when he mm -hmm. kicked her out the uh, van mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I remember. That's my favorite scene, too. Mm -hmm. Lead them hoes, Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> to kind of like the sentiment of that song, I felt like that, in terms of replay value, right? Like mm -hmm. this album. That's something that 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 that's sticking out to me, and I don't know. Overall, the messaging is there, right? And like like I said, there's a lot of things on here that talks to me directly. Mm -hmm. That I feel like it's very therapeutic. I feel like this is very four four four. He's just literally pouring out his heart, like things that he's either witnessed or things that are just bothering him, or mm -hmm. things that are just plaguing us as melanated people overall. I don't know if I if I listen to this album for like personal enjoyment. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like listening to almost like a self-help book. I feel weird about this project because all of the other ones I could bump just cause like it, it, like it had something to it. This one is different. Like I have to listen to it with a purpose. Like I don't listen to it just for enjoyment. I don't know if I enjoy looking at myself in the mirror in father's time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like dealing with that trauma. Hmm. I don't know if I, I, mean, you just I don't skip know if, that track. But I'm I'm just saying overall Excuse sentiment. Me? <laughs> <laughs> maybe you gotta sit with it longer. Like maybe, maybe it's still too new. So every time you hear it, you're just like, oh shit, I gotta think about this again. I don't think but that's it. Well, okay, go ahead. Okay, maybe well, fuck my idea. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, you was about to. I was maybe. trying to help you, but hey. <laughs> Kendrick is really good at making conscious rap music that kind of sounds like popular music. Mm -hmm. But if you really listen to it, obviously it's conscious. So yeah, I can see you having, you know what I'm saying? Not wanting to always think about some shit and just bump some mm -hmm. shit. So yeah. Everything you just described, <clears throat> I can't bump that. You can't bump that. I can't yeah. bump, fuck you bitch, no fuck yeah, you nigga, no nigga. fuck you bitch, no fuck, no, I can't. Yeah. But, I, but I mean, I don't really get that feeling with the other songs as much. Really? Like I do with like Mother uh, I Sober. Oh shit, man. Ain't no way I'm skipping that shit. I didn't say I'm skipping. No, I know, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm just for myself. No, I mm. feel you, Bruh, I feel you. You're not skipping that it. That no, song is fucking beautiful. It's beautiful, yeah. but- But you can't bump it? 
it's just it's it's, it's sensitive. Too heavy. Yeah, it's heavy, man. Like, yeah. and and it's not a bad thing. No, like, no, no, I get what you're you saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is an art piece. Mm -hmm. You know, and I felt like that with the heart as well, the heart part five, mm -hmm. which is not a bad thing. I like it. It's just. Move. It takes me like through a real personal emotional toll. Listen to yeah, I don't this. get all that. There's certain albums that definitely do that mm -hmm. for me. This one doesn't do that for me. It just, it definitely feels like a very very heavy album, mm -hmm. but it's not to a detriment. Like I can mm -hmm. still just put this on and drive. Even worldwide steppers, right? Like I, I think that's a dope ass song, but is that something you bump? That's not like you don't bump mm -hmm. that. You're absorbing that. You're 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 in that world that Kendrick created, but this is not like. I don't, I wouldn't bump that. I don't know. That yeah, line about yeah. fucking white chicks and ancestors looking at it Dope. like it's retaliation. <laughs> no, I'm bumping I'm that. You. you know I think I'm that. bumping that. I know you always think it's like that, do. man. I can't up, help it. I can't help it. That's my line. It's between you and one of my best friends. I either think about him or I think about two. And that's just what it is. He's talking about his sex addiction and his girl asking him like, what is going on? Like, are you sick? Like, what's the deal? Are you addicted? And he's talking about like, it's like, no, I think I'm racist. Yes, crazy! Because <laughs> on surface, it sounds funny as shit, yeah. but when you really think yeah. about it, <laughs> if there's any rapper on this earth that I mm -hmm. would think would not be doing that, mm -hmm. it's Kendrick. 100. Yeah. Not that he's ever said that he wouldn't or even mm -hmm. put out that idea, I just mm -hmm. never thought about it. Mm -hmm. But the way he laid it down on that song, that's why I can play that song all the time, all jokes aside. I'm just like, that is such a fucking interesting concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, like, what's some of, the st st some of the standout lyrics for you? I mean, I'm sure I'll feed off of that. I don't know that there really were standout lyrics necessarily because mm -hmm. there were so many just generally interesting concepts. But if I'm looking at the songs, like, I like that whole take off the fabricated, uh, what did you that's say? That's yeah. 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 mm -hmm. that's, well, that's probably my favorite jam yeah. on here. But mm -hmm. the shit about um, waiting for the, the villain to, or the hero waiting for the villain to save him, savior. Mm. That yeah. was Savior. That's yeah. another one of my favorite songs where um, where he says, one protest for you, 365 for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That might be my favorite line from here because it's so simple, Yeah, but it's a concept that a lot of these like allies really don't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. grasp. Capitalists pretending to be compassionate mm -hmm. bother me. And he says, suck my dick <laughs> with authenticity. Mm -hmm. Those were probably my favorite bars from, the, from this album. It's just the way Kendrick was putting these things where it's like when someone's on the outside looking in, mm -hmm. they don't think about this shit. They just mm -hmm. think, oh, I'm helping, mm -hmm. I'm helping. But it's like, nah, you're, you're not really. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of conflict with this album mm -hmm. because it seems like he would say one thing and then do the opposite. Tupac used to do that a lot too, contradict. He'll say something in one song and then come back and say something in a different song and it kind of contradict what he said before. Yeah, I mean, so, I tried not to look at it too deep mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. but now I see why people were so pissed about Kodak. Cause it's like after listening to this album and hearing him talking about trauma, cause the entire album is about trauma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then when you get down, you start digging deep and you see, okay, Kendrick has trauma due to his daddy issues, but also due to partly because of his mother mm -hmm. who has trauma because she was sexually assaulted, mm -hmm. abused, etc. Now I see why people might be confused about putting Kodak Black on the album. Well, what, what do you think about what he said? He wondered if that was Robert Kelly's uh, issue. I think when you start putting those ideas out there, it's fair game. But on an album like this, to, to kind of almost give these people a halfway out, I think it's a slippery slope and it's a dangerous territory. I think he was trying to go against that though. Quote unquote, cancel culture. That kind of thing irks me mm -hmm. because I think it makes the idea of cancel culture mm -hmm slash you having to be accountable for your shit, it makes that a very simple conversation. And it's not a simple conversation. R. Kelly abusing multiple women and having to pay for it isn't fucking cancel culture. It's called accountability. Mm -hmm. So when I listen to this album, and I listen to the concept and then I hear Kodak Black and then I hear other things, I'm just like, this is confusing. I'm not exactly sure where this is going. But then I just look at it like, well, Kendrick never really put himself in this spot of I'm the, I'm the number one conscious rapper. Other people did. Right. So I think it was you, it was either one of y'all that was me. just like, we don't really know Kendrick like that. And that's what and I was gonna right. say. Y'all was gonna reiterate that. And I think he's kind of showing that. He was just like, y'all think y'all know me, but y'all don't. Right. I'm fucked up too. And I think that's why he, he put a person like Kodak Black on it because people clearly think Kodak is fucked up. You know what I'm saying? He puts himself out there and all that. He's not such a conscious rapper or anything like that. So people had this perception of Kodak Black where 
people have this perception of Kendrick because of the type of music he makes, but deep down he has some of the same traits as Kodak Black. Not saying that he's raping women or anything like that. But that's the point. I understand that's what you're saying is the point, but I think he probably looks at Kodak Black and sees some things in himself or, or, or and vice versa. Because, okay, let's say he does that, right? But then, I don't know, he does something extremely philanthropist or whatever. Like, he still, is, is, at that point, is no two sides, or is it two sides at that point? I think there's just certain things that just kind of there's just, no, justification no, no justification for. Right. I'm not saying there's justification for that. It's not that I'm covering up that. That side is still a shitty side of you. Mm -hmm. Could you not say that he has a good side to him if he did, if he was a philanthropist? I think everybody has darkness and good to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's it, it comes down to a matter of self-control. I agree with what you're saying in terms of Kendrick sees a lot of the same traumas that Kodak has, mm -hmm. but the difference in Kendrick is that he didn't act out in the same way that Kodak did. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But he has acted out when he's talking about fucking these white women and right. I might be racist. Taking a woman by force is, there's no, I don't care what, I don't care if you donated a hundred million, like. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You've literally changed her life forever in the most negative way possible. Which is a fucking So all of this two side stuff, I don't think that that <clears throat> works with fucking rapists. No, if you just happened when you were a kid, you dealt drugs to your community and you changed later, that's two sides, you learned whatever, but there's certain things I just can't look past. But now after listening to the lyrics and really analyzing what's going on here, and you have an album about trauma, it just seems odd to put Kodak on there because it, it's almost presenting him in a position of, I'm also the victim, which people have done with R. Kelly. Cause just like the line you were talking about, mm -hmm. what if R. Kelly X, Y, Z? Well, yes, that happened to R. Kelly, but he chose how he reacted to that. I'm not trying to be an apologist for these guys at all. I'm just trying to understand his thought yeah. process when saying certain things he was saying in this album and some of the people that he chose to be on here, like Kodak. I don't know, I think he just was like, uh, is it N95? He's like, mm -hmm. give a fuck about you niggas, I'm like Oprah dog. Like, he's like, I don't give a fuck how y'all view this or whatever, this is what I wanna put out, this is what therapeutic for me. Accept it, don't accept it, this is what it is. You know, I told y'all he was gonna give TDE some bullshit. You think his whole album's bullshit? This, no, 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 this Kodak, <laughs> this Kodak thing though, mm -hmm. that's fucked up, what he did to them. <laughs> to put Kodak on this album as his last album. Yeah. And we're like, you know what? Y'all deal with that. Take that. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> but he said, I'm I'm more Kodak than what you guys painted me to be. I thought that was an interesting line as well. Cause he had a line like that before where he was just like, a lot of people peg him as a Talib in common, but he's more Compton. So it's just like, I try to tell y'all, like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a thug out here. Like, <laughs> this is an album that's, that's, you know, clearly dealing with duality. And I think those are, are, are parts of it. Um, I think he's very clear in certain things that, that he's saying, where these are decisions that I make, but in the opening song, he's like, but I hope you find peace of mind. Because I think in the last song, he was like, I choose me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to do what what's best for you. Mm -hmm. And I think throughout this album, kind of unpacking some of those things and how he dealt with some of those things and and how he would manage to overcome them. Giving people like affirmations as well on how they could probably get over it as well. I believe that he doesn't care what the reactions are. Mm -hmm. You know, to Kodak being on here. You know, it's been what? 1,855 days, five years. Um, he said, I have, for two years, I ain't have shit to say. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to go to therapy just to get all this out. And these are some of the things that I'm seeing in the world. I'm in love with this album, actually. The more I listen to mm -hmm. it, it's, it's beautiful in so many different ways. Um, how it rebels against cancel culture um, and PC culture to a certain degree. How it calls out certain aspects of it. You know, like you mentioned earlier, the, the fake woke people and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, I love all of that. Uh, Cause there are a lot of people who get on there just say shit, just to say it, cause mm -hmm. it sounds good. Absolutely. Trying to get your followers up and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I don't know if, if there's anybody on his level that's actually taking taking a societal viewpoint of the world and, and dissected it in a mainstream album for the world to hear. Mm -hmm. In addition to packing in trauma specifically black trauma as well 
<clears throat> and you know how he's able to overcome it and then you know with his seeds trying to hopefully make sure that they'll be a step better because they don't have to deal with the stuff and carry on that trauma mm -hmm. to a certain degree you know what i was thinking about I was like, what is the the tap dancing mm -hmm. you know standing for and, and at one point i thought it was all like, man i think it's just people that are you know online tap dancing you know trying to say stuff just to appear you know socially conscious i was like is that what that is that's not what i got but i want to i want to know what you got first listen i was like damn that's that's interesting for him to kind of basically saying you're jucking you're, you're shucking the job and you know mm -hmm. to to gain to get attention mm -hmm. and you know you putting all this jury in a couple of different ways you put mm -hmm. jury on this flashing all you're doing is just tap dancing for folks take uh, it off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, take it off. So that was one of the things I got from it. What'd you get? I got the idea of tap dancing or dancing around the issue and not addressing it That's head on. Too. Again, that does make sense. That could be it. Could be both knowing him. Mm -hmm. This album, a lot of it is about him dressing, addressing his issues head on mm -hmm. as opposed to dancing around them and pretending like they're not there. I don't think I've ever heard Kendrick be anywhere near this vulnerable. Mm -mm. Like not like this. Not mm -mm. like this. Nah. The mm -mm. shit that he's saying on here is just like for an artist at his stature, he doesn't have to do this, but he did. So the whole tap dancing thing is called Mr. Morale. So the fact that you have him having these weird tap dancing interludes, I just assumed that it was like stop tap dancing around these problems that you have and yeah. deal with your trauma. The tap dance had also happened after the We Cry Together song mm -hmm. too, and he's he mm -hmm. did say yeah he he kind of even mentioned that. Um, so I thought yeah. that was dope too because the transition almost sounded like a headboard at first. Oh after yeah, this, it was mm -hmm. like trying to fuck out the mm -hmm. words, and, I, and it then it kind of transitioned to like the tap dance. And man, when that motherfucker went to Purple uh, Hearts with Ghostface, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That shit is so motherfucking good, man. That beat, the way Kendra was sing rapping on there. Summer Walker was the singer. Yeah. Yeah, man. She was dope. My app, my iPad broke, y'all. Damn. Out. But yeah, she was dope. And then Ghostface just came in and just, man, he just was yeah, icing on the cake, really bro. Yeah, he a really solid verse. Yeah, his voice changed. I, I think yep. you had played us a song one day, and I was like, damn, that's Ghostface? When did his voice change? Yeah, this did not sound like Ghostface. It was yeah. still a dope-ass oh, version. Oh, maybe because I saw he was on it, I, I did hear Ghostface. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't hear it at first. Mm. Like, it, it had to go deeper into the verse, and I was like, Ghostface? I recognized the cadence, but I didn't know it was Ghostface. I just mm -hmm. knew I recognized that cadence. Mm -hmm. But then when I saw it later, I was like, oh, God, his voice really did change. Mm -hmm. Now, the one I, I'm not too fond of is Rich Spirits, I think. <gasps> What? I don't think I like the beat, man. Oh, man. I, I don't love think that I like one. the beat. <laughs> that whole idea of rich nigga broke phone and he's talking about how mm -hmm. he stayed away from social media. Mm -hmm. That whole shit. That yeah, whole <laughs> shit. I was like, God damn. That is such a dope concept. Yeah. That's the conflict I have with, with the song is because I like what he's saying. It's mm -hmm. just the beat. Mm. And it fits, but it don't feel like it kind of fit. I don't know. It's mm. just so fucking weird. That's how weird. I feel about Die Hard. I don't, I don't what, know really? the lyrics, but yeah. I don't like the beat that much. Okay, but, yeah, I can see yeah. that. BLST, is it Blast? I assume it's Blast. I don't know who that yeah, is, Yeah, I think though, it's Blast. He sounded great. He sounded good on here. I typically don't like his stuff. But Damn. I do like him here. The way Kendrick used him, I thought, was, was really good. The way he was singing, mm. I thought, was really good. Um, it wasn't very nasally, uh, high Tibbly sounds. And I like the the more upbeat side of this with with Big Steppers. But yeah, when it goes to the Mr. Morale disc, it's just, that's when this motherfucker just take off. Did you get a Kanye feel for that song, mm -hmm. Mr. Which Morale? One? Yeah. When I put it on the first time, I knew it sounded familiar, but I was just like, okay, whatever. And the second time, I was just like, damn, what the fuck is it? It was the third time, I was like, oh, it sounds like what Kanye was doing on Yeezus, mm -hmm. but it's just good. Mm -hmm. Cause it's actually good rapping. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Is mm -hmm. that the one where you said Kanye's a better man than me? For forgiving Drake? Nah, that was, nah, on that, was, that, was on, uh, that was on That was a father time. time. Yeah, mm -hmm. father time. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Morale, he was fucking he was really doing some interesting things mm -hmm. with his flow. Yeah, man, I'm like you can. The more I listen to it, the more I'm falling in love with it. Um, and the more I like the project in its entirety, man. Mm -hmm. Good last project that he gave T D E. He put his whole heart into his last project with T D E and I think for me, that's commendable, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because he could have just gave him anything. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, gave, yeah, yeah. He gave him a double album and basically like a Jay-Z 444, 444, but just deeper. 
Jay Z's was cool, but compared to this, it's damn, like, damn, damn. Man, you could have went a little deeper, bro. I mean, shit, it feels like two, <laughs> two separate albums at times. Somebody um, else said that, and I didn't, yeah. I didn't connect it. It's, it still sounds like one long narrative. Yeah, it, to it does when, when, when you just hit play and just let mm -hmm. it go. Yeah, like, cause that's what I did the first time. Yeah, me, me too. Even now, like. You know, I kind of glanced at it, but mm. I just kind of just let it go, let it go. Like, trying to absorb it as a, a full project. It doesn't feel like two albums. The production takes a turn right after, right with Purple Hearts to me. When that comes out, it kind of smooths out a little bit more. That's still the first album, isn't on. it? It is. All of those songs prior to that has more of a, a consistent up-tempo or uh, up-mid-tempo type feel to me. I can see that. Yeah, the second disc has songs that are maybe a bit more calm. Melodic. Yeah, it yeah. starts off that way. Until Mr. Morale. Mr. Morale is mm -hmm. the only one that's a bit more like upbeat, but yeah. I can see what you're saying. I mean, it was just a thought I, I just had today. I haven't really had a chance to really like separate them out and say, what if mm -hmm. I just listen to this part by itself right. and listen to this part by itself? And even just see what the length is uh between the two i think they're both about 38 minutes and if that's the case then with the projects nowadays you know kind of fit within that but i'm only saying he gave him bullshit because of the kodak shit. yeah mm -hmm. you know um not the quality of the right, album right, right. but just the full-on controversy that 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 came from it yeah. people like i'm it's not fuck like i haven't bro been, people are saying i'm not fucking with kendrick yes. no more. and it's the auntie diary so that's thing. what we haven't talked about yet I, so. I saw that more so than the kodak thing. no people were i actually saw that first but then once ken said the thing about kodak when i went and looked there's a lot more about kodak so that's what i don't understand kodak is a popular artist like but he, not with kendrick fans i don't think mm -mm. right kendrick fans who have this perceived idea of who yes. he is if okay. kodak is on future's album no or problem. or young thug's album or mm -hmm. someone like that or a gucci project nobody's gonna say a word i would even dare to say schoolboy no nah, i think well i, I don't i don't right i don't yeah. think if it was another right. td TDE artist because the perception of Kendrick, mm -hmm. nobody on TDE has that. You're correct. Yeah. I, I did not realize Kodak's name carried that much tarnished weight. Bro, yes. people hate I did not Kodak, dog. People. I think when you pair him with somebody like Kendrick. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what it is. But, but with the rest of the industry, nobody nobody's gonna there's say just like as a many people that on the right, right. i know but there but that's what i'm about to say there are just as many people that hate kodak mm -hmm. as they are that love him hmm. yeah. so that's why you're able to see his music go right. to number one kendrick is in a lot of his fans mind not supposed to work with a guy like kodak exactly mm -hmm. but he also very explicitly says on the album i'm not your savior yep mm -hmm. and yep. you guys made me the savior mike yep. like what mike mm -hmm. was talking yep. about you know earlier that's not my fault mm -hmm. you have to make a choice so at this point some people are making choices that they yep. are no longer going to support kendrick's album that's or kendrick's nice. music i think it's totally fair game you just said that he made a conscious choice and he mm -hmm. knew it would happen so it's not wild he yeah. knew it would happen which funny enough he's talking about cancer culture and the reactions and stuff mm -hmm. and people actually doing that yeah. in yep. response to his album yep. Yep. my thing is that's, at this that's... point in 2022 i don't see why this is a hot topic this whole cancel culture <clears> thing if you're you're doing certain things that you know people are gonna get upset about there are repercussions that come with it I don't really care I still I don't I still, care and I don't think he cares he's already come come to grips with what the outcome of this could be I think he's totally fine with that I'm still gonna stick with two is wild though you're canceling Kendrick because of a feature mm -hmm. and, and Kendrick has released great music positive music conscious music so you're taking so you're just gonna erase the first four because of a couple of few features on this one no they're saying they're not going to support his music anymore right that's not erasing anything his music still exists this is the kind of argument mm -hmm. that trumpers put out there this is the logic that they that they use which is you're erasing everything i've done because i made this one mistake and it's like well no you made a conscious effort to do this thing and now you're having to pay for it. I get what you're saying, but at the at the end of the day, I don't feel bad for anyone in this in this situation. I don't feel bad or anything like that. I just think it's a little wild in my opinion. It's just wild to me. You don't you think it's saying? par for the course? It is. I'm, not, I'm not saying and... I'm not saying it isn't. I'm just okay. saying it's just wild for me. Like like I don't know. It just I what, mean people have done this with a lot. I mean, people's reactions to people doing things that 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 run afoul of what their morals are. Um, yeah, I am. R. Kelly, uh, um, for some people, Michael Jackson, 
we can go down the list of, of people that, you know, have been accused or found guilty of doing horrible things and people like, I'm not fucking with their music So would you anymore. find me fucked up if I still listen to R. Kelly songs? No, no, no. I don't judge anybody that do or don't. I do. You know, so I would I, find it I fucked up if he got out of jail and he did a tour and you went. When we're talking about listening to somebody's music, that's not really the same thing. Well, actually, you know what? You know what? It is kind of the same for y'all because y'all use Spotify and shit. I would go out and actually buy his CD or his record. Mm -hmm. You know, if I wasn't doing that, my support is pulled. I kind of I get you see look, what I'm saying, but I going to a saying. concert. You're giving him direct money, and to me, that's basically saying I think that what you're doing is cool. Now, I'm especially not especially if he just got out and he held a, and he did a concert, right? Which I think would happen if he got yeah. out of jail and he did a and he did a tour, it mm -hmm. would sell out. You know, people mm -hmm. had the same reaction to to Drake's album, Certified Lover Boy, I think, when yeah, he used the R. Kelly sa sample. This is fairly common. So was that wild that people mm -hmm. were like, "I'm not gonna fuck with Drake no more"? That. No, I'm, I'm asking now. I'm saying. I, I still would think that's wild. I mean, look, no judgment. Mm -hmm. The same thing with like Kevin Samuels or whatever. Like, no judgment. It's just in my mind. I just, I just think it's kind of, kind of, kind of wild. I'm not gonna dismiss Kendrick all the way, mm -hmm. um, because I would really like to understand what's happening here. I do think that that's a very bizarre choice. Mm -hmm. But if I met six, seven people that were just like, oh yeah, I don't fuck with Kendrick anymore because of that Kodak thing. I'm not gonna be like, oh, that's dumb. Why don't you explain that? I'd be like, okay, yeah, I get it. This isn't my opinion. Mm -hmm. They look at it like he's platforming a rapist. But what he's also doing is he's, he's putting a rapist in the same category as himself, right? Because even Kodak says, you know, oh, I'm with Kendrick or whatever. I'm, I'm right? on the album with a legend. I'm on the album with a legend. So that's something people who see as a rapist can put under his belt. I'm on an album with the most conscious mainstream rapper out right now. So I don't see it as weird that people have a problem with that. So they can pull their support, but Kendrick is still allowed to make as many albums as he wants. Mm -hmm. He's not canceled. That's no. the whole point. Right. Mm -hmm. All of this cancel culture shit, it's nonsense. Mm -hmm. No one has been canceled. <laughs> but the thing is, you now have to atone for the shit you do. And people don't like that. What'd you guys think about uh, Kodak's verse? People don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with the way Kodak delivers things. Now, do mm -hmm. I have a problem with, you know, the stuff that he did? Of course, of course I do. If we're just talking about the art, like, no, nah, I don't have a problem with the way uh, Kodak delivers things sometimes. And I, and, I also, and I said this on a future review, is like, it's interesting on how people utilize him depending on what they need him for. What are your thoughts on how Kendrick ended up using it? I like it because, um, I don't know, I, I, I like that mumble Kodak thing. Mm -hmm. It touches a heartstring for me because I'm from Florida, and I know people that talk like that. Mm -hmm. So it hits a heartstring with me personally. It didn't. It didn't bother me at all. Like I, I thought it was mm -hmm. fine. So we haven't talked about the other thing that people are mm -hmm. ranting and raving about, which is Auntie Diaries. That was the first thing I saw people talking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. I saw that too. Me too. So I guess like, what's everybody's take on on that? Like, first of all, do you like the song? I do like the song actually. Again, we're talking about a mainstream rapper who's talking about. Um, you know his 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 upbringing, mm -hmm. and you know he had family members that were um, trans. Trans. We don't hear that often. Right. Right. And just you know how he reacted to it, the family reacted to it, et cetera, et cetera. I thought it was uh, vulnerable uh, for him to put that out there as well. Um, with, it's vulnerable for him. For him, yeah. Yeah, because it opens him up for yeah, all types of jokes and comments. And judgment, and all that type yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Like, what's the point of insulting his trans uncle? They don't know his trans uncle. Yeah, we don't, if, yeah. But if Kendrick gets beef with somebody, the first thing, oh, that's why your uncle is, is you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Huh? Really? <laughs> A grown man? If I was around people that, that didn't um, accept that, and you saying if I said I had a, a trans, they'll mom use it against or, you. Yes, How? really. Yes. If you bro. walk around and your girl's ugly, right, and okay. you get in a beef with somebody, people are gonna be like, "That's why your girl is ugly." It's got nothing to do with you. But that's mm -hmm. my girl, though. I won't say everybody, but a lot of people have crackhead uncles, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to say mm -hmm. I have a crackhead uncle. But listen to what you just said, right? Okay. A lot of people have crackhead uncles. Yeah, yeah, How yeah. How many people have trans uncles? Especially in the black community. Mm -hmm. But, you know, very also, taboo. somebody is mad at you or you piss somebody off, that's why your uncle a crackhead. Let's yeah. take it to the streets. If they want to hurt you, what are they going to do? Grab family members. Yeah. 
and send you fingers and toes right. and shit like that, okay. right? Like, so at the end of the day, this is just a different variation of that. Yep. Okay. I, I just at, at, at older ages, I just didn't see people doing that. But I Hell guess yeah. it seemed like a childish thing to do. It, and it would be. They think that that hurts. Them. Yeah. Like a lot of homophobes and transphobes, they think if you have that in your family, then there's like a gene and it's and it's infectious. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I can so see they're gonna way. use that again. They're gonna say, well, if you have a trans person in your family. That means you're gay. Hmm. Yeah, it, it's stupid as shit. It makes no sense to you because you wouldn't do something that stupid. But yeah, people I are evil, so. man. People are gross and evil. I feel like Kendrick has painted a perception of vulnerability, mm -hmm. but he just gave us what, what he wanted us to think of him. He stripped all of that away. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is the true me. Like these are my true traumas. This is really who made me who I am. Like I was saying earlier, he's never been surface level, but this album makes those other ones feel surface. Mm -hmm. I got you. I like the song too. Mm -hmm. right. oh, I, I, can, I can openly say that and admit that. It's a therapeutic song, obviously for him, but I see why people have certain issues with it, but I particularly like the song. When you talked about contradictions earlier in some of his rhymes and stuff. Mm -hmm. This was the song that I had heard oh, that yeah. Year. Because, and I don't know if you caught the same thing, but he called his aunt he, yep. and Dead then he called her her. Yep. And I was just like, okay, it has to be on purpose, right? Oh, 100. It, yeah, it's definitely on purpose. He seems he knows what to do, but he, then he purposely didn't do it. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, that's 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 interesting. What did, you, what did you take from that? If I had to be, so my thing is, I have two sides with this. <laughs> you're a Gemini, cause you are a Gemini. I think what it is, is he is making this song not for trans people. He's making it for people that are uh, cis, straight people that okay. may be confused about how this whole trans thing works. Okay. He's working through the mental process yes. of someone coming to terms with having a That's trans true. family member. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you think of that person as the 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 gender that you've been used to, and sometimes you think of it as the gender that they're telling, telling you that they are. Yep. I have that issue with trans friends. Luckily, mm -hmm. I don't slip too often, but in my brain, sometimes I misgender. Okay. It's just luckily for me, I'm usually able to catch it before, catch it, comes before out. it comes out. Yeah. So I think this song is him purposely doing that. Mm trying to show like how this whole thing works like you just found out that someone that you grew up with as your aunt mm -hmm. is trans and it's now technically your uncle mm -hmm. even though i've heard some people say that that's not really the case you can still call them your aunt mm. i'm not speaking for don't do that to me i would never try to explain this <laughs> i'm just saying what i have heard the the kids still call kendall Je or uh, is it caitlin the kids still call Caitlyn Jenner their dad. dad. Yeah, they do. So I don't know if that's an across the board oh. trans thing or if that's just a Caitlyn Jenner thing. Now, as far as the negative side, I also see that there are people that would be bothered by this song because they don't feel like it's his place to kind of use that word in the way he's using it. Even though he's trying to do it for a good cause or a good reason, mm -hmm. They're still like, don't use us for your little cause. Mm -hmm. It would be like Eminem putting out a song being like, nigger, 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 nigger. We were so young and didn't know any better. Black folks ain't going for that. Eminem would be in trouble and you know it. Do you think it's because he's in the culture of rap music as to why he would be in trouble? I don't think that it would work even for someone that's outside of rap culture. So what's the difference between rap music and movies? Because people can get away with it in movies. Mm -hmm. They can get away with both. Yeah. So what's the difference? Because you're playing okay. a character. Kendrick's not playing a character. So even if he was, so if Eminem or Kendrick was playing a character, that makes it right. No. That's what I'm trying to understand. No. Eminem did this in a song. Okay. And he played this live. You are now kind of asking for other white people to do the same type of shit. People don't really sit there and recite the movie out loud while they're watching it. That doesn't really happen. Well, and Kendrick even acknowledged that in, in the song towards the end, which I love how he did that build he up. Say? He brought the white girl on stage. Oh, right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Like he says that you can't say that shit unless you're cool with a white girl. Say, even though he says niggy. I don't know why he says niggy. I heard nigger. I heard no, nigger. Nah, I heard, I heard nigger. We gonna play it after this. Anyway. You gonna be wrong as fuck. I know probably. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but here's my problem. I feel like a lot of liberals and leftists expect everyone who's learning to automatically be where they're at. Like it took me years to get to the point where I'm even remotely understanding how some of this shit works. True. But I think a lot of liberals expect people that are walking into the door to already be where they're at instead of giving them the same amount of time that they got to learn this shit. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some people need time to build up and learn things and figure these things out. Absolutely. But back to the trans side or the pro LGBTQ side, they're looking at it like, well then learn that shit before you put it in a song. I get both sides. I don't personally have like a strong yeah. opinion necessarily because I get what he's trying to do, but I also get why they're upset. If this was a white rapper that was telling this story, if this was Macklemore, telling this story and he's putting nigger 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 in a song i'd be like bro no bleep that shit out we'll get what you're trying to say is this sort of like liam nissen remember when he told that story not really because he didn't say the word okay okay, okay. to a degree people did get mad like that right when right he was talking when he was trying yeah. to make something a, a positive thing from a negative thing mm -hmm. with this kendrick is trying to make a good point from a negative situation mm -hmm. but people hear it and it's triggering i get it there are some people out there that it may change their mind it may cause them may they may actually go look and educate themselves on sure. it at the expense of of course what everybody's on on the other side are saying it may do some good i don't i i, I don't know it's also doing harm and i think again i think if you look at this album that's a lot of what's going on here. Mm -hmm. It's like, so I, I I would like to believe that he educated himself on this before he did it. He is the only person that could confirm that or yeah. not. I just don't think he would be that, that reckless. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, Kodak, this, I think, are two of the things that, you know, he's pulling out these really harsh, uh, toxic, mm -hmm. controversial issues and putting them into this art piece pretty much creating a whole conversation around it, which mm -hmm. sometimes gets toxic again. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah. it's just weird loop that, that we're kind of in with this album. It's a very tough conversation to open. And I think that this could be a good opener for a lot of cis straight people to understand this topic. Cause it's not like he said the F slur and didn't make a very specific point to mm -hmm. say, this is wrong. Yep. Personally, I think that if he if he just bleeped it out, it, I think it would still have the same effect. I don't think he had to say it, but on the other hand, I see why he did it. But this that's part of the reason why sometimes I do just skip this song because I don't like hearing that shit. Favorite tracks for me, give me N95, give me um, Father Time, give me Silent Hill, give me Savior. Did a little bit like, ooh. <laughs> I do kind of like that part I'm though. I do. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> we cry together. Mother, I sober. Give me Auntie Diaries. I think that's a deep song. I know, I know a lot of people have their dislikes with it, but I, I, I like it. Give me Father Time and give me Worldwide Steppers. Let me start with We Cry Together. Purple Hearts, man. That Those two back to back are crazy. Mother, I sober. Fucking Mirror, man. Is, 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 is freaking incredible. Give me United in Grief. That's a good one. Mm. United in Grief. Started off right. I'm going United in Grief, N95, Savior, Mr. Morale, and Mother Eye Sober. Kendrick, if you're watching, amazing fucking album, man. This this is truly a, a piece of art, in my opinion, like transcends hip hop. You tapped in even further to give us, you know, even a deeper perspective into who you are. And I, I would have never thought that. I didn't think that that's where this was gonna go, but um, amazing fucking project. It's probably gonna take another five, six years for another one, which I'm okay with. You know, I think for most artists, I'm always wanting something, but I think with your projects, they're so dense and so relatable to so many people that, it takes that amount of time to really like absorb it and really live with it. Amazing fucking project again. Kendrick, if you're watching, this is a great project. I think you uh, you put it all out, out on the table, left it all out on the table for uh, Top um, with this double album before leaving the label. And the thing I've always appreciated, appreciated about your music is that you're always clearly intentional. You're intentional, good, bad, or indifferent. You know, like, and you know that that's commendable. You know, especially with art. 
you pour your heart out and you know it's appreciated you know what i'm saying because you don't have to do this but you did it's out there and, and you know that you're going to get all types of feedback from it but just like a true art artist you know you just take it in stride and, and do what you feel like doing and, and that's appreciated man especially coming from an artist another artist so nah man good job on another project the more i listen to it like ken said the more i love it good job bro uh, Kendrick, if you're watching, like I said earlier, man, I, I, I have fallen in love with this album. There's a lot here, uh, a lot of different ideas and thoughts, uh, concepts and stuff that I have, um, from so many different songs or one line or here, one line or there. But I think one of the things that stood out to me is you were like, I can't live in the matrix. And then, and this is on mirror. And then you said, I'm sorry, I didn't save the world. I'm going to remove these these things you guys have assigned to me and i'm going to let you know that I, i'm not here necessarily for all that you know I, I can't save the world i'm not your savior and i think that's dope and i think in the midst of doing all of that when you go to the opening track united in grief when i think about everything that's going on here from a lot of different angles it's creating this this discourse online and among friends and stuff about some of the things that you introduce and people are united in those which is kind of crazy you don't admit to having all the answers and you're not trying to give all the answers but yeah i'm gonna stop there man um yeah love it and keep doing your thing you still did tde wrong by doing this cordette thing though but that's neither here nor there <laughs> kendrick uh great album man this is actually one of my favorites, and I know people are gonna get all pissy about that, I don't care. This is some of the best work that I think you've done. On first listen, this is the one where I was like, this is a fucking masterpiece. This is a real, real, real piece of art. I think you should take something from the fact that people care enough about you and your music to break it down the way that they are and to be bothered by certain things that you're saying on there. Not many artists have that luxury mm -hmm. of being critiqued in that manner. I know it probably sounds weird to an artist like yourself, but coming from someone that actually does critique art, I think it says a lot when we care enough about the artist to say, I think that this is troublesome and it doesn't match up or align with my idea of this. Because not everybody even thinks about art in those, in those terms. Some people just say this is just disposable. You're not disposable. So I think there's a lot to take from that, but I think that this is an amazing piece of work. Thematic issues and uh, topical issues that I may have with some of the songs aside, I think that this is a very, very, very interesting piece of work. And I'll definitely be listening to this a lot more and trying to break it down a lot more, but just fucking amazing job. Amazing job. Thank you.